technology is always a solution in the crisis so technology will be really handy there are multiple areas in which this technology would be adopted one area is in the conduction of admission test the other area where technology definitely will play a uh, most important role is in the learning space for online education to really become mainstream and enroll uh, you know millions of students rather than hundreds of thousands of students um, you know we need to have online degrees that are accredited by uh, the various agencies my message to all the students and the higher education stakeholders is we need to double our efforts in this time in order to sustain and keep our economy afloat in india we have to look at technology and education 4.0 as Uh, actually providing education to the uneducated people who are not getting quality education education 3.0 was nothing but technology driven this is now going to be a permanent feature and it's now going to figure in all the teaching learning activities of times to come I will quickly introduce the format of today's virtual summit to our audience. Today there will be two panels who are going to discuss their insights and experience and thoughts on two emerging trends. Our first esteemed panel will throw light on supporting faculties to achieve higher impact in the hybrid learning environment. The session will go on till 1:30 p.m. and the second panel will discuss on enabling job interview readiness among students, key trends and enablers. It will start at 1:30 p.m. and will continue until 2:30 p.m. So, before introducing our panelists, I would like to mention that today we will witness 12 thought leaders from top institutions of India, and to bring interesting nuances in our discussion, we have also been joined by two senior leaders from Harappa. Harappa is a leading learning platform in India for faculty development and student interpretation to achieve organizational success and individual growth. So leaders are Mr. Sudeep Chabra, Vice President Academic Operations and Mr. Praveen Gaur, Vice President Institutions. I welcome you all. So I will introduce our panelists now and would like to request their quick opening remarks for the session. Professor PK Nayak Vice Chancellor AIS ECT University welcome sir good afternoon thank you thank you uh, yes sir so i would like your quick opening remarks for the session right it's very but uh, i first of all i would like to thanks the college dunia for providing this type of platforms where we can exchange our idea and get the uh, new innovative idea which could be implemented in the organizations and the institutions for the benefit of the uh, student so definitely this is welcoming and uh, uh, i feel proud to participate in this uh, panel to discuss about the hybrid learning thank you Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Mohan Banerjee, Director, IMI, Kolkata. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, thank you, and uh, I really look forward to participating and hear from my esteemed panelists in this particular session. We have been in the middle of COVID, and uh, now that uh, we are at the final throes, we realize that the hybrid learning or the blended learning form is here to be there for some time. And uh, well, we have all equipped, and it will be an exciting session hearing from each other. Thank you. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Narayan C. Ghosh, Principal, Bengal Institute of Technology. Welcome, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, good afternoon sir yeah i compliment to college dunia for organizing such an event uh, there are a lot of events but okay uh, when uh, you hear someone uh, specifically focus to something so it is always encouraging so uh, i look forward to hear all my co panelists thank you very much thank you sir uh, professor manika valya dean and professor rishiv university welcome professor manika Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations to College Dunia and also to Team Harappa Education for uh, envisioning that uh, you know this kind of a platform. Of course, it's not that 
in the previous years we've not witnessed such kind of panel discussions and talks but then again since now we have opened up on campus and we've resumed physically how actually we can take up this hybrid which we were forced to at one point you know is what i am really looking up with all my co panelists so thank you once again thank you ma'am uh, dr anjali midasharan dean and professor gt goenka university welcome ma'am thank you and uh, thank you team um, college dunya and team harappa for choosing such an important topic as uh, dr manika just mentioned uh, because in this age of reskilling and upskilling and the definition of which has been changing ever since last year because last year it meant for faculty to learn how to go online and now it is for faculty to remain online while being on campus so uh, it'll be interesting to hear everyone's perspective thank you thank you thank you dr anshi dr anil alawar dean of professor kiit group of institutions welcome sir okay thank you um, good afternoon everyone um, i think it's a very good initiative of college dunia regarding sharing the thought process about the learning in past two years and uh, the topic uh, of today's discussion is actually very relevant of providing supports uh, to the faculty members um, uh, who have faced actually both type of learning and the physical learning as well as this online learning and now we are calling it as a hybrid approach so i think it will be a good initiative and a good uh, session when we all will share our thought process among all and we learn from each other and to implement in our own organization thank you thank you sir thank you uh, dr n m mishra dean and professor srm university welcome sir uh greetings of the day to everyone and it's a pleasure for me and for the all academic fraternity uh, uh, that we you have organized a very good seminar uh, where you are going to discuss about the hybrid use of hybrid platform for the effective and efficient purposes and making the learning more engaging and 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 my best wishes to everyone and we are looking forward to utilize more hybrid platform for the in future journey thank you thank you sir and now thank you all the panelists now i would like to hand over the stage to mr sudeep chapra vice president harappa he will set the context for today's discussion and moderate this session thank you mr sudeep thanks for coming the stage is all yours now i am in the back end please let me know in case you face any technical glitches twinkle thank you so much uh, thank you sir. Hi everyone good afternoon thanks for joining and i'm very happy to get to know you from not only your introductions but also the sort of diversity of people that we have here so i thought that when i was preparing for this i thought rather than talk about what's happening and what has happened and now it's no longer as recent the time that corona has actually impacted all of us uh i thought we could uh, we could focus this panel on what is the future and what are some of the next steps that everyone is looking to work towards right when i say everyone i mean not only all the people here but i also would like to share some of our learnings having spoken to and serviced and you know worked with a lot of institutions across the country but as i was preparing for this session i thought from a faculty development point of view or for them from a future lens i think three three things are important i think to me the first uh, thing is that when we think of when we think of you know teaching especially in a hybrid learning environment uh instructional design becomes a key differentiator so you know instructional development or instructional design is one of the key shall i say variables of success today the second thing in my view is how is each faculty member oriented towards this change so you know what is their personal outlook towards are they open to technology do they think this is going to be something new do they think this is just a phase and it will go back um 
how are they thinking about learning something as they teach in this new world and i think thirdly most importantly as people who are working in these institutions i think the third lens of the conversation could also be how are institutions and organizations thinking about uh, this change and what are they doing to move forward so i'm sure all of you have had some experience in if not all three uh, at least one of the three right so i think i would like to kick off by first really looking at the second part of the conversation not the organizational lens uh, not the instructional design lens but the personal lens right so i want to get a quick round table view of how are you personally thinking about this as change and do you see this sentiment being echoed by other faculty members <laughs> in your institution right uh, and maybe i can start with dr mahua banerji and uh, and then move to uh, dr anjali and then to professor anil halawat and then we'll go around the circle if that's okay Sure, Sudhi. So, uh, frankly, it was not an option. I mean, uh, it really was not an option. You whether you choose to, you know, get on the bandwagon. So, it hit us in the face. And at that point of time, initial days, it was like uh, you finish semesters, you must have exams. Uh, not that much of online processing, uh, all that, but you, uh, you nonetheless you need to go through the flow. So uh, while it was a knee-jerk reaction uh, when we ended, you know, March uh, last year, there were still a couple of months in between when we geared up towards the next session uh, when students come back after internship, new batches join in, etc. So June, July, well, that was the time everyone was more equipped. Faculty, um, they, all of us. and uh, my colleagues here in ami well um, a certain amount of uh, orientation uh, hand holding was done for them because uh, there was the it part of it uh, uh, so uh, if, if you're not getting into how we are the pedagogy part how we are looking at uh, delivering the content it was even you know acclimatization to this online thing where you're using you're used to uh, using whiteboards uh, for uh, for computations now you move on to blackboards uh, people were in classrooms with the excel sheet and faculty you know they move from one laptop to the other now the sudden uh, suddenly the entire thing has gone virtual and you are in 360 degree cameras and uh, students are watching you uh, work so yes uh, it was a huge shift in mindset and uh, thankfully you all of us have reconciled to the fact that even when uh, students are coming into campus a part of it is going to stay because it's not only about students it about it's about executive education corporate engagements so uh, they prefer to learn executives companies we realize they also prefer to have their executives in their distant locations so this hybrid kind of a format is here to stay and uh, all of us uh, we are modifying we are getting better technology is a very big and Uh, and without getting into where the mass of metals and uh, online proctoring will help you do the exams, uh, conduct exams online. ERP assign will help you get your assignments and quizzes, everything on the virtual space. Uh, it is not a hundred percent, you know, uh, moving over transformation from one space to the other. Uh, each has its own unique final nuances, but uh, yes, a part of it is definitely here to stay. and personally uh, all faculty members they geared up to and they have accepted this fact as a way of life thanks uh, actually i also want to to lens this from the point of personal development right which is the second part certainly everybody has got impacted and now has got used to this but uh, are you also as an organization thinking of uh, developing faculty members to to be perceived as people who are in charge and who are happy to take this change head on you know because i think as harappa when we've spoken to many institutions and we've spoken to we've done very many faculty development programs our learning has been that uh, there was a fair bit of pushback from the parents and students saying you know yes my professor is teaching yes they are good but you know it's not as as uh, the before model right it's not sitting in a classroom so there's a lot of feedback going back to universities saying listen this is not working out 
uh, what are you doing show us how are you developing your faculty uh, to be ready for the future so do you also see that happening i think that's also something i want to understand uh sudeep uh, the gap that you mentioned here um you know online classes uh, in my opinion and what we realize out here is not a clear cut substitution of what transpires in the classrooms because uh, let's face it there is a lot of peer to peer learning students uh, working in batches and the faculty you know that uh, mentoring that uh, relationship uh, that is automatically built when you are engaged with students in groups uh transfer to the online space breakout rooms and uh, you know you are there but that amount of engagement and bonding uh well it has surely uh, i mean it has surely taken a hit uh, if i say that uh, we have not uh, felt it and uh, students are absolutely gung ho and happy uh, uh, with the online space and there is no difference no uh, definitely not true uh yes but uh, the, when we are moving on to the blended format so we know uh, students are in the hostel and they are going to rotate and some day be in the classes and the mentoring can happen outside the classroom also so we we'll looking at this hybrid format to fill in the gap uh but to answer your question yes uh we have received a lot of feedback e from faculty as well as students because uh, the bonding what you know it's not the content it's not the deliverables the questions that are asked uh, content delivery is not different so what is different what is missing it's the personal touch the physical touch and i think uh, you know it's very difficult to replicate that in an online space Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Anjali. Do you also echo that sentiment, as in the sentiment of show me as an institution, uh, what are you doing to personally develop your faculty? Uh, well, I would um, agree with what uh, Dr. Mangwa had said, and in fact, uh, if we look at the transition that happened last year. that was an abrupt transition and a forced transition as she said we had no choice but the transition that we are now headed towards is is over time so when the faculty were initially learning to suddenly uh go in from classroom teaching to remote online teaching that is not really hybrid so it was completely remote online so initially the struggle was just trying to figure out technology the tools uh how to deliver content how to engage with the students the students were not receptive there were several challenges of people having trouble with devices uh you know so all of those challenges were the focus last year but over time we've come to realize that if we were hybrid model we have understood and accepted is here to stay so if we were to now go forward towards embracing it fully uh while recognize the challenges that it brings with us we've realized that there are certain key areas where we will need to focus a uh, curriculum is one such area because we cannot continue to teach the way we have been teaching in the past if we were to now move towards a hybrid space the expectations of the students vis-a-vis who controls the classroom also changes and so the institution as an institution when we plan for this transition faculty training of course becomes one key component of this training but then the focus also needs to shift towards revision of curriculum revision of student expectations deliverables student engagement feedback and even evaluation because evaluations have also changed so as an institution right now we are focusing on all of these together embracing the fact that yes hybrid is the way forward thanks so much uh, and is there anything specific that you're doing as an institution you know from really the training and development of these faculty members of course you know like dr banerji said the mechanics the technology all of that is almost a given right now people need to be trained but from a personal development lens are you also looking at any frameworks for faculty or or it's a combination of everything 
no so as of now it is a combination of everything and i think we will emerge with a model i think very soon because right now as i said we are in the process of another transition so i think that model will emerge but it will take time because right now again there is a lot of experimentation happening with what is going to work and this experimentation mostly would be need based as of now because this situation also is new so hype the definition of hybrid i think also would evolve because hybrid uh, would we see the way the pandemic is behaving um, and the way people are, have now learned to, to work uh, not just in the education space i'm sure uh, this culture of working online and uh, blended uh, you know uh, ways of functioning in various organizations would continue for a very long time now in fact that could be the way forward forever uh but uh, there will be lots of changes that will yet need to be done in these methodologies that we are evolving right now with the changing needs so as of now we are catering to the needs right now we don't really know whether we may have to again switch back to completely online depending on how the pandemic behaves so it's a process of learning for all of us right now. thanks for bringing that point out actually it quite echoes what we have seen in the market which is that when we talk to institutions institutions will come back and say yes mid range planning we will do later long term planning we will do later let me solve for something right now so if the need arises and we feel that there is a group of faculty members who need to be developed personally then we will attack that but right now let's just get this semester out right uh so i want to go on to dr uh, halawat is that also something that you see or in your space you're looking at it also in mid range long term planning yeah yeah um actually i will start uh, from the learning uh, from the online mode um we have learned a lot from uh, the online uh, but uh, actually it is the one way of learning in online mode uh if we will continue it uh, uh, as it is then i think it will collapse the learning uh so we have to adopt this hybrid approach intelligently now question is is it um, um, uh, we have to adopt it um, in a short span of time or for the longer period of time i think uh, we have to plan it in a longer period of uh, time like for example uh, to develop the faculty members related to this online uh, adopting or using the online approach as like we can develop uh, our uh, in our space we have developed the video lectures and uh, approximately 40000 video lectures we have developed and uh, we have uh, uh available all these video lectures in our lms on moodle software and uh, uh simultaneously we have uh, adopted our approach to develop the animations uh, like i belongs to an engineering college so we have developed the animations because in online mode if a faculty member is teaching to the students then it is very difficult to see the students are available um to attend the lecture um, or not they are uh, joining the class or, or they are available or not so it is very difficult so to make the lecture interactive it is difficult for any faculty member so we have trained our faculty member with the help of quizzes and a small part of the animation related to their um, uh, lecture so generally they introduce the animation or they introduce the quizzes like a quizia software uh, very uh, this this software uh, this application has the some um, part of the music uh, with the questions questions are coming and the answers are going on uh, so students are feeling actually happy um, with this type of experiments we are doing and uh, still actually we are now converting from last 3 4 months in the physical mode but uh, the quizzes the assignments the tutorials we are taking in online mode so we are using this hybrid approach um, uh, intelligently and i think uh, some part of uh, the learning which we have learned in online we should continue in 
is still in online mode another part like for example uh, the we are uh, conducting the conferences uh, uh, international in online mode and now all uh, part of the world all countries of the world the experts from the world are um, interacting with each other using this approach otherwise before the pandemic uh, it is difficult to uh, uh, to uh, organize such type of conferencing where the um, huge number of participants are attending the conference either uh, in uh, speaker mode or attending mode from all over the world so it is i think this this hybrid approach is good in conducting the uh, conferences or seminars like the same symposium we are conducting summit we are conducting we are sitting here and uh, discussing as is a good example i am uh, sitting in my organization and uh, now listening the speakers from various part of the uh, country so i think uh, we uh, should take the advantage of this learning in all the approaches now developing the faculty members yes we need to still we have uh, taken uh, certain amount of knowledge related to the use of the technology but still we continue to develop our faculty members and we provide uh, uh, the help to them like for example uh, the atal fdp is going on it is a good uh, i think a good uh, initiative by the aist and uh, um, uh, we should continue to uh, allow our faculty member to attend uh, all these kind of fdps thank you thank you dr uh, alavat i want to move on to uh, dr ghosh uh, dr ghosh in your view since yeah. we've talked about since we've talked about uh, the fact that personal development is important and i think what i hear from the three panelists is that yes currently short term we are solving for technology we are solving for people we are also solving for our own institutions and our future as an institution um what has your experience been between these three parts right and what are you focusing on uh, yeah 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 uh... all my uh, all my co panelists they have brought out good points no doubt about it i do agree uh, with major part of it as someone said that uh, i think uh, dr mohan benarji uh, said that okay it's the stop gap arrangement stop gap and i do agree with that but it is very difficult to assess the reasons uh, whether it is for economic reasons or business reason covid-19 brought out a revolution of technology by evolution that is uh, uh, you can say it is a third world war like situation yeah uh, towards the business side uh, but as you know that uh, in person uh, in person teaching in person teaching in the classroom there is no alternate of that and as a, a engineering person what i understand uh, from system point of view it is basically if you talk about hybrid uh, learning it is single input multiple outputs and all multiple are outputs are in varied situation one is you know someone will be there in the class someone will be there in remote areas huh? but uh, it is good for one way but if it is a, if we want to make it two a process then again it will be multiple inputs and single uh, you know uh, uh, in, uh, multiple inputs and single output means faculty will be there as a single person and someone will be questioning uh, students will be questioning in multiple points so uh, no doubt uh, since covid has given us a lesson and we do not have any other choice but to go for <laughs> go for education uh, continuing so we'll have to go for uh, all these things no doubt hybrid hybrid concept uh, we know that hybrid is a part of blended learning not necessarily that uh, all blended learning are hybrid type yeah so uh, what i feel is is uh, uh, it's good uh, that okay uh, since we are completely coming out from covid 19 pandemic hybrid has to go it has to continue but we do not know whether after uh, when we will have a new normal whether this hybrid learning will continue uh, 
uh, in the the way it is going on or it will take another uh, another shape so uh, the the present trend says uh, uh, hybrid can be a uh, part of our uh, blended learning but it's uh, also trend says that it may not be a permanent feature for the future but it will be a good education delivery system for the ed education delivery system the hybrid will be good enough and uh, of course uh, sometimes uh, i i felt uh, through my 38 years of my career as a service engineer then r and d person as well as an academic person we, we learn by practice we learn by practice not by only teaching unless uh, practices are done it will not remain in our memory for long time so so uh, teacher has to uh, keep the practical and also the laboratory classes as well as has to assign, give the assignment to the students then only students will be able to keep it in the memory what i understand online is a monologue type online is a monologue type monologue means is a one way process mainly mainly one way process uh, because uh, within 30 40 minutes it cannot be made two way process anyway we'll have to continue uh, as we know that okay we cannot make uh, we cannot uh, make an omelet without breaking the eggs so we'll have to we'll have to uh, go along with that and uh, in the hybrid concept we'll have to uh, uh, keep in mind that there are three components one is the time another is the space third one is the interaction time and space is good fine we can maintain it but how to go with the interaction between the teacher and student that we'll have to work out so for this time i'm keeping it here if i get time then i will give response in the later stages thank you thank you uh, dr ghosh i think you made multiple points so i want to use what you said to actually proceed to uh, you know dr valia but uh, let me just let me just try to synthesize what you said because on one side i liked the way you said okay there is similar input and multiple outputs so traditional situation was a uh, professor would come and you know would dive, give a very directive input and then okay there would be multiple understandings but in the in the in the environment of hybrid there are multiple inputs and how do we get to one output right i would like to contest that a little bit you know because to do it seems in the traditional ट्रेडिशनल क्लासरूम वॉज i could suppose i could say was the same which is that the professor would come it would be it would be his or her viewpoint and the and and how do you calibrate whether the understanding of the entire class is at the same stage as a hybrid model right that disconnect i see uh but at the same time i also hear this general view and not only from you but from many other people we've interacted with that this is a sort of passing phase somewhere or the other this is good to have but not critical to have and you know over a period of time the best form of instruction actually is face to face instruction so i want to use this cue to talk to uh, professor valia and ask her that the first component i was talking of was also instructional design and 
whilst there is a lot of instructional design and pedagogy design that is taught in the K-12 space, specifically in engineering colleges and other uh, postgraduate colleges, it's usually people who have had some experience, you know, either you're an engineer and you're starting to teach engineering or, you know, you've been in management and you're starting to teach management, right? And those, those faculty members sometimes don't often go through learning instructional design. And I think that has become the bottleneck, right? Because now as you are in an uncomfortable environment of uh, this new medium of instruction, uh, there is a resistance to say, okay, oh my God, for the class, I have to prepare. I have to make my slides. I have to shoot a video. I have to make my notes. I have to do the preparation before what will happen in the class as a pre-read. Then make sure that the content is sent out, but then how am I going to assess in the laboratory or you know, in an experiment? What is your view on the instructional design and the need for instructional design? And what have you been doing? Okay, so thank you for the question. And uh, uh, basically, you know, I mean, again, to begin with, that pandemic actually forced us, you know, it was it was a forceful thing as what we know. Uh, now see the positive side of it. We were forced to something uh, which was purely new. We were forced to experience something which we have been always discussing and contemplating on the table but had never executed. We always as educators talking about getting technology into the classroom, but the systems, the instructional design, as you are rightly putting up, uh, the mechanisms, you know, the operations, they were not at par to support it, right? So now with pandemic, we were actually forced to get into it and start executing it. Whether we were ready or we were not ready is again, you know, a different uh, arena which we, we can take the debate into a diff different turn. But of course, as the other co-panelists are talking about, there was a shift of curriculum design. Curriculum design had to be shifted overnight. Evaluation parameters, the rubrics, everything had to be relooked and redesigned. The more and most important and the utmost important thing which we all did and we are still struggling and doing with it was to change the mindset of the faculties who were actually delivering. They had a different set of challenges, which were like those real life challenges, handling the students at the same time, handling those set of parents, right? Because this generation for which we are talking is a tech driven uh, uh, generation. The students are more tech savvy than the teacher themselves. So for them, everything is just a click and a Google away. Okay, but for teachers, it becomes like a struggle. So what we did was, of course, we also followed, you know, the change of the curriculum. We changed our uh, uh, assessment patterns. We, we actually changed our session plans, the deliveries and the outcomes were again redesigned. But then coming from a creativity school and heading a creativity school, you know, it gives us little more flexibility because design education and art education is primarily, you know, uh, somewhere where we work on to the traditional class classrooms, the workshops, the studios, where there is a hands-on experience. But at the same time, there is a lot of referencing and the research, which is purely, you know, into the real life that goes on to. So what we did was something, of course, you know, uh, as a uh, I just heard that the complete sessions were made more engaging for the students uh, by animation and multimedia and all that. The other thing which we which we uh, actually introduced, you know, and this was not very difficult, was the use of simulation. We, we used simulation to deliver our lectures. We took help of AR and VR. So it was basically, you know, modeling a dynamic system in which the learner was involved. So we focused more on to the engagement of the student. So simulations actually help the students to understand the nuances of the concepts. Students often find them more and they actually, you know, were purely engaged because they could feel that they are into this virtual reality kind of a situation. So that's how, you know, with School of Creativity, we actually started uh, moving and giving them an exposure uh, for uh, simulations and 
AR and VR. But yes, for the faculties and for the instructional designs, there was a bit of challenge. But then gradually when we saw that the results and the outcomes were better than the traditional patterns, then uh, we, we actually thought that this would be a greater way and uh, what the other panelists also says that you know if the faculties are say for example sitting in some international country where the travel was banned and we were and the, the curriculum requirement or the mandate of the curriculum was that you know you have to have that international or the global exposure getting a faculty through a virtual platform was far easier rather than you know getting into all those logistical issues so that way i think uh, uh, at least for us we saw the positive side of course presence do matter education is all about the holistic development uh, it is also about the behavioral engagement and the emotional engagement the sense of touch as one of the uh, panelists discussed about you know so we have to look into it we have to give them a 360 degree kind of an experience but then just picking up the pros of uh, hybrid learning this is what uh, our take and our strategy was thank you so much um, I, I actually think that you are not saying with something very different from dr ghosh right both right. of you both of you are here are saying that just the just the nature of the subject you teach if you're in engineering or you're teaching design does require a lot of face to face interaction it does require a lot of studio work a lot of lab work and so on and so forth but what i hear you say is that in your in your institution you quickly moved maybe not so much in the instructional design aspect of what is the right way to do it as training but also using some ready to like readily available tools you adopted technology very fast so see for again sudeep here getting into the instructional design you actually need time and that drop of a hat we had no time the complete dynamics changed overnight right but then now since we are back to the physical mode we are on campus certainly for me and my school we are taking into this hybrid thing i mean you can imagine i'm not in my office i am outside right so this is the way you know we have actually taken this turn towards the positive side of hybrid learning so we are not pushing it back Yes, there will be a you know certain percentage of on campus. There will be a certain percentage of hybrid. So this is how we have actually divided the curriculum now. Sure, and I think this is where I want to bring in the third aspect, right? Which is that everyone realizes the challenge, and like it's two sides of the coin. There will be a benefit, yeah. and there'll always be a challenge. And I don't think we're in a position today to say that. This is in our control and we will go back to fully you know uh face-to-face -face mode of teaching so this brings in the point that was that was a that was a third point which is the possibility of organizational readiness it, you said you already moved to ar vr you tried simulations uh, i want to move on to dr mishra and ask his experience which is do you feel firstly two questions to you dr mishra First, first question is, firstly, do you feel that we are constrained uh, as an education system by not being very open to technology? We, I think, you know, if you look at the West and if you look at a lot of universities in America, I don't think that they do a lot of online teaching. But about a decade back, they started experimenting with online courses, at least. Forget hybrid teaching or forget response to Corona, they were as badly affected, maybe more badly affected. America was more badly affected as a market because it's structured like that than India. We were still very, okay, let's, let's solve, let's solve quickly. Um, so first question is, do you think that institutions should start thinking about imbibing technology, teaching faculty already and getting actually serious about spending some funding on the aspect of technical training, technological training. That's one. And the second question is, how did you deal with this? And what are you doing at an organizational level to be ready for the future? 
<clears throat> thank you sudeep and uh, let me tell you the two things is here one how the institution have to adopt the online way of teaching or technology enriched teaching in their pedagogy uh, you know uh, uh, i am associated with the distance learning i was associated with the distance learning online learning blended learning and uh, during the time of this pandemic people all over the world or particularly in india people adopted the hybrid learning or you can say the blended learning here what happened is you no know, so uh, uh, early the, before pandemic people are very much rigid no i the only way of teaching is to go into the classroom and be can model mode of teaching and go to the class and teach the student but situation compelled them to adopt this uh, technology both the synchronous way of teaching as well as the asynchronous way of utilizing sharing the learning material uh now what happened uh, if you look back or uh, before pandemic people were least aware about the use of asynchronous platform and and very very much least aware about the synchronous learning platform we are we are talking through the synchronous learning platform when we used to teach in indian universities and at the us universities uh, through our webex or some sort of adopt connect or something like of synchronous learning platform that time people used to say oh it's not a, an effective way of teaching but now uh, situation compelled them and by way of that a new things started you know teaching converted into a learner engagement during this period of time earlier it was a teaching and now it converted into a learner engagement how to engage the learner so learner can be engaged through synchronous learning platform learner can be engaged through a recorded lectures learner can be engaged through the face to face teaching in the classroom uh and and without technology you cannot engage so people started using the different sort of asynchronous learning platform some are using more, a lot of uh, vendors are there the google has started gcr and moodle is a freeware and blackboard lot of things are there people started you using it they are sharing the uh, recorded lectures quiz all type of different uh, modern simulations and all these things what is happen and it is the need of the hour because by way of that only you can engage the learner learner engagement is possible and holistic lifelong teaching is possible only through sharing the material through asynchronous learning platform and sharing the synchronous lectures or sharing the face to face learning through classroom methods what we did here and 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 this is the need of the hour whether you are teaching management program where you are teaching uh, engineering program or whether you are in a science and humanities program it, it is the need of the hour you know because we have to transform ourselves you know suppose my students is going to come from me they are not going to learn without the technology so technology competency is very very important for them and and that is possible only we can embed the technology in rich learning platform to our student and that we did during this corona time so this is the way and i think uh, most of the institution who are successful successful in the global arena or in india those who adopted early technology and that's why they are successful and i think my 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 opinion is that all of us must go towards the hybrid way of teaching now coming to uh, our institute and uh, our university uh, we are one of the best university nat a plus plus institution in the country and we when we got this uh, uh, problem you know uh, what we did is we we started using gcr we started through gcr we started sharing the, the synchronous links uh, google links to student and we started teaching them and through gcr only we started create we created our uh, google classroom platform where the the important thing the major challenge was instructional development you know each course is having the units and under that unit there are different elos suppose one unit is having five elo so each elo contains instructional material instructional content and that was the major channel so a major challenge for all of us and we took it as a task force 
we created a group of techno savvy people we created a group of instructional designers we grew and a team we created and and by way of that we we developed the instructional material wherein we used our faculty the first thing what we did is we have designed a course plan course plan each lecture wise plan what are the materials have to be there what are the pedagogy you are going to follow whether you are going to use a case which case then whether you are going to use some recorded material each things have to be we have incorporated in each lecture and each lecture is a LO based lectures by way of that we successfully uh, implemented it and today you will be surprised to know even today uh, the students some of the students started coming to a face to face class but they want the gcr they want the asynchronous material they want the recorded lectures so in the class i told our student our professor you put a camera you put a camera and record the lectures and and, and record the lectures and upload on gcr so uh, instantly what happen is uh, you know students are getting classroom lectures and side by side we are uploading their recorded lectures also for that purpose which will be extra uh, hardware investment we made it smart classrooms we set up we set up some uh, recording uh, recording type of things some uh, additional materials we utilize and by way of that we made our learning engagement system very effective and very efficient so deep and and this is the way by way of which uh, we survived and we successfully implemented all these things so i think i have answered your both the questions so deep yes yes dr mishra thank you so much i think what i hear from you is that firstly you took quick reaction uh the reaction was quick the task force was made uh i suppose every institution made a task force and that happened almost everywhere but what i hear from you is this interesting this interesting thought that uh the students who's the consumer of of this piece of education if i may say it like that uh actually validated this, they they validated this shift by saying thank you for this instructional design and the fact that you broke down the the modules actually suppose you're teaching mechanical engineering you break it into its components or you're teaching design you talk about principles of design elements of design you break the learning modules into small consumable chunks and the fact that you had to think of instructional design forced you to write the pedagogical material uh on what should be step 1 what should be step 2 what will be the learning outcomes how will you achieve these learning outcomes how will you assess it and this so called guidebook has become effective for you that's what i hear and i also hear that the students want more of it so this brings me also to professor naik which is that in our experience in harappa i think we have had a very unique crossroads because what we offer are a set of soft skills that we feel are necessary for success and we talk to both we talk to both sides of the spectrum we we have a lot of institutional clients uh, we also have a lot of corporate or enterprise clients so it's very interesting to see the division is very clear division right institutions trying very quickly to move to this new method of teaching because the students want to consume it in a certain way and when you go to the corporate the corporate saying thanks we hired 21000 graduate engineering trainees from your organization but you know what we have to train them again so can you help us train them so we see this disconnect very clearly so we see but if the institution is working towards this why is the corporate company who's going to give these students jobs uh not affected so there is a disconnect somewhere right um i want to ask professor naik in his experience do you feel the students are coming back to you and saying that there is a disconnect or on your own you are saying no let us as an institution get ready for this and what are you doing what has your experience been thank you sudeep and uh, first of all i would like to thanks all my co panelist for sharing their views on hybrid uh, learning mode but uh, so far as uh, the question is concerned 
that definitely uh, the pandemic compel us to transfer our methods of teaching from offline board to the online board definitely then after that our teachers i have seen that the whenever the teacher for the first time they deliver their uh, lectures through zoom or yeah, that is google meets then they face a lot of problems and they hesitate to teach then our we have the iqac cell so the, this is the responsibility of the iqc cell i have instructed the iqc cell to look after this matter and assess the teaching uh, of the teachers then they told me that now the teacher to fear because they are not friendly users they are unable to operate then i instructed the department of computer science in the department of it that you please provide the special training you give the you know, all the especially the, the, the faculties of the arts the faculty of the arts and the uh, the general this this uh, faculty you know they face a lot of problem because they are not the friendly users of the technology as compared to the uh, science and the uh, computer science and the management like this so it is very well uh, staff uh, taken by our ipsc department that they under their guidance and my instructions now they provide the uh, so to say faculty internal faculty development program should be conducted for 7 days and the department of computer science they instructed how to prepare the powerpoint how to develop the e content because without uh, qualitative e content without qualitative powerpoint now we cannot attract the attention of the uh, students because this is the higher education institutions and all the students are the matures so we cannot uh, talk like a, uh, like a class 1 class 2 students so to say uh, so we have to develop in the quality so this thanks to the our i our department of computer science and the it they have instructed and now all of my teachers now they become the friendly users now they can freely they can without any hesitations at any times now they are ready to take the classes and teach the students and if, and the students are on the other side the students are also friendly users then they the students also recommend their automatically they recommend their uh, lectures of the uh, teachers and they can use it in the, in their convenient times so there is a there is a online interaction is there you know the thing is that but right. definitely it is a very good initiative when uh, we have we have also t- taken and our my faculty so supported my staff uh, supports my students cooperates and they almost all the students maximum i have visited their classes online classes and seen my i i instructed them man, uh, on your uh, videos i want to see the faces of the students and how the students are attended in the online classes physically i visited and i have observed that that i found that maximum number of students they have attended but because india lives in the village quotation is there so it is not possible for all that we can all the all the topics of our curriculums and for all the students now the blended the uh, uh, hybrid learning should be compulsory for that no definitely no, i for that we must uh, for the uh, that is uh, blended in blended modes now it should be both in offline and the online so my thing my uh, uh, that is the uh, always question is to my faculty is that now the education some uh, some uh, uh, the programs some programs would better be effective in a controlled mode but online learning is a uncontrolled mode we cannot control when a 200 students of ba become we cannot control the 150 students now this online mode is only we can control some suppose here we are the uh, nine uh, panelist now a very small thing this program is a uh, conducting everybody is listening to each other because so this is in a, a small portions uh, we can it is very good but in a larger scale now we, we should we should have to prepare a plan and in organized way we should deliver the lectures we should uh, follow the hybrid uh, modes definitely it should be the alternatives this is this is the alternatives 
But in some, and second, the second important thing is that now the the instructional design, the curriculum is not external online mode. And now, now it is very soon. Now we are. I have also instructed my faculties that you should prepare the curriculum, redesign the curriculum as per the NEP, as per the NEP which you are going to uh, adopt from the uh, next session. So there is a flexible mode. Flexible mode is there. So definitely, uh, my staff is very cooperative and they are doing very, they are very good job. And uh, also uh, now. Right now, we are we are following the both modes. Now, offline mode is also there, and online mode is also there. Right. And so, I'm just so, interrupting because I think we'll be on time. But I, okay. I just wanted to quickly close, right? And to say, I hear from you that uh, this has actually helped you. You are doing all the right things, and the way the faculty has, shall I say, absorbed the idea and said, okay. Let's move forward. Very positive. But I do want to I do want to close the thing on a sort of a rapid fire question, which is uh, you just have to answer one word, right? And I want to go around the room and probably I'll call out all of you one by one. And the question is very simple: that if you had to, if you had the power to spend the money and allocate the funding in your institution towards any of the three things that I'm going to talk about. Which is the thing that you are going to use, right? Where are you going to focus for the future? The first, developing faculty on their personal development, right? So personal development is one. Second, looking at spending money to get systems and processes of instructional design set, right? And the third is uh, preparing for technology. Preparing your institution technologically to be ready for the future. Out of these three, I'll just go around quickly. Please just answer in one word. It'll be good to end uh, and find out the temperature of this room, right? So, uh, Dr. Mishra. Uh, you're on mute, Dr. Mishra, so I can't hear you. Technology, Which one out of the three, right? te technology enrichment is the investment now. Okay, technology. Professor Alavat? You're also on mute, Professor Alavat. Sorry. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, I will go for all three. No, you have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, as a preference wise, first I will go for the faculty development. Okay, fantastic. So, technology, faculty development, Dr. Banerjee? Um, uh, technology. I mean, if I have to choose one. Uh, yes, yes, you have to choose one. I'm forcing, I'm forcing you to choose one. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what about you, Dr. Anjali? Although I would like to choose personal development, but I'll choose technology, if only one is the choice. Okay, okay, very valid. Uh, Professor Valia? So I would like to go with the second one, you know, where you are actually putting the systems in place. Faculties, of course, you know, my argument would be faculties are more like lifelong learners. They will adapt. If the support is given, they will, you know, but if the systems are in place, it will make their life a little easier. So instructional design, right? Instructional, instructional design. design. Okay, we have a very variety of votes. Two last people. Um, Dr. Ghosh. Yeah, if you allow me 50-50, first two. <laughs> no, one. <laughs> you have to okay, choose one. Second, 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 second one. Which is instruction yeah. design, right? Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. What about you, Professor Nayak? Definitely it is technology. Okay, so I think clear winner. We have the two, three, three people, three votes for technology and I think uh, two votes for instructional design and one vote, actually, Dr. Anjali, I want to take the personal development vote as well, <laughs> but personal development. So with that note, I know we are three minutes over Twinkle, sorry, but uh, thank you so much for this interesting discussion. Uh, I wish we had more time because I think we were just getting warmed up, but uh, good to know of all your experiences. And uh, of course, we are very excited at Harappa Education to clearly make an impact uh, in the in the institution space and very happy to continue this conversation. 
Over to you, Twinkle. Okay, thank you very much, Sudeep. You have nicely conducted. Thank you so much, Dr. Ghosh. Twinkle, you yeah. unmute now. To unmute yourself. Clearly, technology is winning, right? Technology is winning, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, Twinkle, we can't hear you still. Which is perfect. All right. I think I think the point I wanted to make is that uh, we had more votes to technology. It's almost validated as, as we say bye to each other. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Uh, all the very best. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank bye. you, everybody. See you all. Twinkle, we can't hear you. So. No problem, no problem. Yes, you are audible now. इसको क्लिक कर देखे तो आ जाएगा नहीं Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. So, yes. sorry, so technical glitches. Yeah. So I would like to thank you, first panel, first panel, for such a wonderful discussion. Now we will start our second round of discussion. Hello, panelists. Welcome to the panel discussion. Thank you. Uh, yes. So let me just quickly check if all the panelists are here. One second. Sure. So, my name is Rinka. I will be the moderator for this session. In this panel, we will talk about enabling job interview readiness among students, key trends and enablers. So, setting the brief about the topic, as we all know, job interviews are supposed to be nerve-wracking for students, which is also an important step. Job interviews, which, is a, which are an important step in securing your dream job, is doing well in an interview. Many students, despite knowing the answers, often get underconfident and miss the golden chance. But uh, what we think, what they only need is proper guidance, a coach who can help them to overcome their fear and lack of confidence. Today, our thought leaders will discuss how we can empower learners to cross their most crucial milestones with confidence. 
Now, uh, I would like to introduce our panelists and would like to request their quick opening remarks for the session. So, first I will request Professor A.S. Arora, uh, Dean Faculty and Staff Welfare, Sun Longoa Institute of Engineering and Technology. Please, sir, I would like to have welcome and I would like to have your opening remarks first. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, my co panelist and people. Uh, <clears throat> uh, quite a apt topic to talk on uh, as uh, as an institution at Santlongwal Institute of Engineering and Technology, we are facing uh, uh, these challenges uh, because uh, the students with, uh, which uh, are coming to mm -hmm. our campuses, uh, they are mostly from the rural background and uh, they find difficulties in facing the interviews and uh, we have to make an extra effort to make them comfortable or to be able to face these interview and challenges on the way. Uh, yes, uh, we are an engineering institution and uh, we need to do a lot many things and uh, we try to incorporate things in our curricula also so that uh, they get ample opportunities uh, uh, to get confident uh, while presenting them, themselves or uh, facing an interview panel. Uh, but uh, the number of students and the time required to be given to such an activity sometimes do not match. I think uh, we need to incorporate a lot more activities, such activities in our curricula also and uh, in co-curricular aspects so that the students get confident through <coughs> various activities. And now, <coughs> Uh, in uh, last few years, uh, we have uh, incorporated these things and we have allowed students to form their clubs uh, for di different aspects. Uh, whatever is the, their interest, they can form a club and they can discuss those. Not necessarily, particularly interview preparation, but just to discuss their uh, whatever uh, hobbies they have or uh, they have uh, something in uh, ideas they have, they can discuss, they can develop, they can work on that. So we, through a, a, a co-curricular activities, uh, we are trying to provide them the opportunities. Yes, uh, I I fully agree with the theme of this particular talk that uh, we need to get our students ready for the uh, facing interviews, whether for the job or anything else. They interact with the environment. How they inter basically it is interacting with the environment, not only with the for the purpose of job, but even to interact with the environment around them. Uh, after the clearing the interviews also they have to be in a team or they have to be uh, with the society. Uh, so uh, engineering colleges are normally there to de develop overall personality. They are not the only the uh, teaching learning centers uh, as per se, but uh, they are there uh, to develop the students uh, in a very, very uh, important aspect of their life when they are moving from 16 years to a 20 years old young man, 22 years old young man. So these are my initial thoughts and uh, I will share my thoughts on the way. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roda. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Kakoli Sen, Director PGGM IALM University. Welcome, ma'am. Thanks for joining us. Uh, ma'am, you thank are Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so ma'am, I would like to have your quick opening remarks for the session. Yes, so I think again, very appropriate uh, kind of topic as my co-panelist Dr. Arora mentioned. And uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I believe, uh, you know, the career has to be taken very, very seriously. And the, 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 the beginning or the starting, their training, their orientation has to begin really early and it has to go hand in hand. It cannot be like, you know, one odd thing at the end of uh, you know, um, your classes or your uh, training. So it has to go hand in hand. And of course, I will talk about, you know, how it can be done, why it needs to be done like that. And how does it help as we go along more in the discussion? Thank you again for inviting me. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Ambuj Kumar, Director and Professor Chitkara University. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tinkal. And uh, uh, really, I, I was all uh, through uh, with the panel number one. And I was just listening a lot of things from there. First of all, I would like to thank you very much and uh, to Harappa Education as well as the Collegium Connect 
that they have invited me i have a different experience uh, in chitkara university because uh, uh, as you know i am a director of a school of planning and architecture and uh, uh, our things are little bit different when i was just listening other panelists in the panel number 1 i was just getting little bit confused like uh, uh, how how to make our uh, student ready for the uh, future uh, life and that that is challenges for us actually what happened uh, in case of architecture in case of uh, uh, interior design and all the things we always uh, we uh, believe in the practical aspect of the thing and this particular virtual learning online learning it is restricted only to the theoretical subjects not like uh, 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 the practical subjects we we are facing lot of difficulty uh, but that is a different thing uh, still because this is uh, 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 this the whole situation because of the pandemic uh, has been imposed on us so we have to create some situation and we have to create our own way of doing the thing and thinking in that way in our school we started our task force committee and we started uh, uh, training giving training to our students even online basis that uh, how to get ready for the service for the future life so this is uh, all uh, uh, what i feel personally and uh, i really th- I, i will be happy uh, to have a uh, 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 good experience people sitting here and i will f- uh, like to have their own their experience to share that how they are doing in their institution thank you thank you team. thank you dr amaj uh, professor pushpalata patel joshi dean and professor kit university welcome ma'am much uh, i hope i am audible yes ma'am yeah yeah thank you so much for inviting me and initiating such a nice discussion what we are talking about is that earlier we were uh, a one sided affair that means the teachers are teaching the students are learning but we never bothered about whether they fit into the work life or not and beyond that in some era we discussed about the graduate attributes that means what are the things we want to look into the students inside the students so that they will be uh, beneficial to the economy as well as to their work field and subsequently we uh, saw that there is a disconnect between what uh, is being taught in the higher education institutions and subsequently in their workplaces but what now we are talking about in this platform is that in along with the graduate attributes how we can instill the right attitudes so that along with this attitudes attributes and good blend of that they can be really ready for the workforce so that attitude build up is now the responsibility is to be shouldered by the universities that's what i perceive in this uh, discussion and uh, it will be a pleasure to listen from all of uh, the panelists thank you so much thank you professor pushpalata yes ma'am your video is off uh, dr rahul gupta choudhury dean career development i am bhuvneshwar welcome sir Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for inviting me and giving me a chance to speak here. Um, I represent uh, a large group, but a small institution. Uh, the group is the uh, RP Sanjeev Goenka Group. They have set up this institutions, three management institutions. I am in Delhi, I am in Bhuvaneshwar, and I am in Kolkata. I represent I am in Bhuvaneshwar. Now. I am a Bhuvaneshwar is just ten years old, and so our experiences are <coughs> quite challenging at times uh, because uh, we are in the field of business management, and uh, most of you would be aware that uh, there are, are a lot of institutions which has come up recently in the country. Recently means last ten, fifteen, twenty years uh, in business management, and so the scenario has become extremely competitive. so our students are actually not competing within themselves but pan india with all other good institutions uh, students so that is a marked change so when we started we used to invite uh, companies for the interviews 
and they used to come and select. Some selected, some didn't select. And uh, what was clear was that our students were not very prepared uh, for the kind of uh, interviews uh, that they had to face and uh, the comparisons and the challenges of a competitive environment. Now, what we uh, did, one thing that we did is differently is that we set up an organization which specializes in training our students for interviews and GDPI and development of uh, uh, CVs and all that. So that has helped us a lot other than, you know, the, the traditional solutions of having clubs and all that. Uh, so two things stand out in my experience. One is that uh, the students for the student preparation ultimately it boils down to getting jobs in good companies boils down to having a domain knowledge. Now the domain knowledge uh, is extremely important for cracking good company interviews, the top company interviews, but they do look at other aspects also. Now, <laughs> those other aspects, development of that overall personality is the responsibility of the student. The organization cannot, uh, do, the institution cannot do much about it. But the institution can definitely help them to grow mentally as well along with their knowledge base and uh, impart better domain knowledge to them. The uh, second thing is kind of uh, uh, special, uh, special. Uh, uh, what has happened in the COVID times is that everything has become online. Even the interviews are taking place online and that's a lot of change. Even we are not 100% sure what works in online interviews and what doesn't. But there are agencies which has come up which are helping us in this. And uh, what has happened is uh, because the it is online, so people, mainly the interviewers, have a lot of time in their hands. And that's why the interviews are getting lengthier and lengthier and they want their the students has to go through many, many steps. Earlier one interview was sufficient. Now you have to sit for the aptitude test, you have to go for GDPI online and then you go for one interview, then a final interview. So a lot of steps are involved. So to prepare our students for that, uh, we are taking uh, outside help also and internally also we are trying to do as much as possible so that uh, they are able to come out successfully. This year has been uh, uh, quite a good result area for that after uh, two, three years of trying and getting affected by the pandemic and all that. But this year has been quite good. Our students have been able to perform very well with the uh, top companies also and so we are relatively happier and probably thinking that we are going on the right direction but it is challenging definitely and uh, that the students has understood that the first realization has to come from the student because they are grown up they are they are uh, 22 23 year old when they some of them are experienced when they come into a management institute and so as soon as they understand the gravity of the situation, they become more serious and basically you have to motivate or inspire them to do better in their career, take their career more seriously, etc. Et so that's from my part right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Thank you so much. Now, Mr. Praveen Bell, Vice President Institutions, Harappa. Welcome, sir. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity and really happy to be a part of this uh, panel today. Uh, so I agree with most of the uh, introductory comments with the, uh, where uh, we've talked about the need of uh, skilling up our students so that they are able to, um, uh, you know, in a way crack the placement season if I may use that word. But really, I think I would, we would uh, at Harappa, uh, uh, we, we would take a step back and really look at the problem at its core. Now, there is enough and more data and research done in the country which shows that nearly 60% of all students graduating are unemployable uh, from a professional market uh, uh, marketplace perspective. Uh, and these figures are staggering. If we look at engineering uh, graduates, uh, only 50% of the seats get filled up, which are getting filled up. More than 50% students are unemployable. 
Similarly, for the other streams, the ratios is even higher for business studies, commerce. Uh, and so what this all this data points us to the fact is that the the so-called essential life skills or the employability skills are grossly missing uh, as part of our education system. Now, this uh, issue has clearly been identified for many years now. And that has been the fundamental difference between our uh, Indian education system and the uh, way the developed economies have looked at this. If we were to look at the curriculums of uh, leading uh, universities like Harvard or the Ivy Leagues, they spend nearly 50 to 60 percent of the curriculum time, uh, the time which the student spends on the in the campus and the university, on really skilling up the students. Uh, now, what are these? any of these industry leaders uh, and we fail to talk to any of the CHROs, these skills uh, have been identified as a core set of uh, uh, some 70 skills uh, by the World Economic Forum, which are called life skills. And uh, for any particular profession, whether it's uh, 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 an individual needs to be needs to excel in five or six of those skills. So if I'm an engineering graduate, I need to be good in problem solving. I need to be good in communication. If I'm a law student, I need to be good in networking, decoding others, understanding the business. And similarly, if I'm a management student, I need to be very, very good in my project management, in my negotiation skills. So clearly the framework exists in the market. Clearly the framework exists globally. And uh, what, what we at Harappa, uh, 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 do and we are on a mission to actually implement these frameworks in the Indian uh, universities and the Indian campuses because we are uh, an Indian organization made for India and uh, our founder is Pramat Ratsina who is the founding dean of Ashoka and ISB, you know, ISB Hyderabad. Uh, prior to that he was at McKinsey. So I used to work with him in McKinsey and I worked with IBM and then I've joined him on this mission. So clearly we've uh, we understand that this is a problem which can be solved. Uh, we can make our future bright for our students, for our children. But yes, it has to be addressed at the core. So like students learn mathematics and they first learn the tables and then they go and solve algebra. Similarly, time has to be invested on building up these skills as part of our education system. Also, one of the biggest drawback I think which our campuses and universities are facing is these skills have not been inculcated in our schooling system. So till K-12, our students are not at all exposed to these skills. So the base is not there and therefore the entire onus and responsibility to uh, Dr. Chaudhary's point has, is now on the onus is on the campuses, on the universities. But then uh, uh, the universities and campuses are doing different measures. They are uh, they, they, uh, doing different steps to it. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is an issue which has been identified, and clearly there are solutions available, frameworks available, uh, which if we work together as academia and educationists, we can give a solution for the industry. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Pravi. So let's get rolling and start our panel discussion. And to our viewers and audience, please ask as many questions as possible. So let's get started. So as we're going to talk about enabling job readiness among students, so I would like to ask Dr. Sen, uh, can you share some general trend among students regarding job readiness? Because where are they? What are the challenges they face uh, having been job ready or prepared for the interviews? I would like to have your views first. Thank you so much, Dimple. That those are like a number of questions and I would be very happy to take them. So in my opinion, okay, let me, uh, if I, I was listening very keenly to what Dr. Rahul Gupta mentioned and then Mr. Praveen mentioned, and I, I have a viewpoint on that. So uh, uh, what Dr. Rahul Gupta mentioned was majorly from a MBA PGDM perspective that, uh, you know, at that point of time, job is what you need to get. You're spending, uh, you know, money on that. And you are at a certain age that you're expected to start working. And uh, so there is, and then uh, Mr. Praveen also brought in that there is a quick fix kind of a solution that you has to be given because that's, that's the final, that's the penultimate step before they actually need to start working. 
and because it has not been there in their K-12 or the you know the graduation, and then so the entire onus is now on the post-graduation, and the institute has to take measures. I also believe that it has to start very early. If it if it if it is kind of given uh, if it is not built in into the system. that mindset it does not develop like you know it it is it is a process that you have to go through it is a mindset it is an attitude that you need to develop and it has to happen in a gradual manner than in like you know some kind of a uh, some kind of a training or some kind of a workshop which of course is working uh, as dr rahul said but there are now increasingly students going uh, going in for asking for placements even at the graduate level So because I have the have had the opportunity of dealing with management students both at graduate level and postgraduate level as well as non-management students, so I have the experience of seeing that how students want to get into jobs. So whether they are studying international relations, whether they are studying BBA or they are studying BA on a psychology or design or law etc. So they want to get onto a job after their graduation. before they do their post graduation mba or you know whatever they want to do so it's important to develop that mindset at least if not the schools the undergraduate program itself has to bring in that sensitivity that preparedness that this is how this is what ultimately whether they are going for their own family businesses or they want to do their own startups or they want to go for a job each of these have some unique skills but each of these also have a basic generic skills that all of them need to develop that is orientation towards work that is the foundation knowledge you know what happens is that somehow there is this mentality that we need to go through our you know curriculum whether it is undergraduate modules or subjects and the semesters we go through them we clear them we get good marks etc then job is something else that that is something you know beyond all of this that mindset needs to be addressed that this is all part of your entire program that you're uh, learning the program has a learning goal which is one of the goals is definitely employability so all the subjects that fall in those 3 years or 4 years of undergraduate and then 2 years of post graduation they should be part of that so when they are studying even in the first year first semester what they are studying they should be able to all gear up or prepare them towards the set of skills that are required as uh, mr bell mentioned that the you know uh, world economic forum set of skills these are life skills and they do not come like you know overnight or uh, in a short period you have to work at them to internalize them of course with training you will polish and all that but if you do it from the beginning and do it over a period of time whether it is in terms of your confidence your ability to you know um, uh, you know data and ana- analyze data or present it or make sense of any report or be able to talk in a group we have the knowledge and have the understanding of the world around you it would give you a better perspective you won't need to struggle at the last minute to get through that job and why uh, you know um, as dr choudhury also mentioned that nowadays the interviews are lengthier they are more you know in numbers probably or longer in duration one of the reasons as i see is that earlier when you could physically see the candidate sitting you know uh, across you 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 could judge a lot from the body language from how he reacts and how he responds and how he, what does his body language say so there were multiple ways of assessing a candidate before you could make your decision but here because it is online there is uh, uh, they need more checks and balances to be very sure of whether the candidate who we are shortlisting or hiring is actually the right fit for what we are doing so maybe that is one of the reasons why they are they have introduced more of uh, such you know interviews and such gateways so to sum up i would say that uh, definitely the process needs to begin much earlier uh at ilm we have tried to introduce uh, an ncr based model called the personal leadership program we've also introduced a career development program which starts for the pg student pg mba pgdm students it starts from the very first trimester itself and for the undergraduate students who are kind of experiencing so it must start so it has to start somewhere in the second year 
first year is foundation where they get a lot of orientation towards other subjects also liberal arts and other subjects so that it gives them that mindset that openness that needs to be there so this is what we are preparing in terms of job readiness of course there is a long way to go for students that that shift will happen it has to happen over but it you know uh, it will happen over a period of time we need to see review uh, what we are doing and start it early that is what i would like to say thank you dr sen thank you so much so very interesting point uh, like uh, sometimes students do feel that curriculum is different they start getting see about job in third year and fourth year and very true we should start training students in the first semester itself giving them certain life skills and changing their attitude and mindset so on the uh, on based of that i would like to ask dr ambarj so okay. how can we bring the reality of world world of work into the education curriculum from the starting itself okay uh, see uh, thank you thank you very much uh, i i have a different again i am telling you i have a different perspective because uh, in our cases in my school we have three departments one is interior design and second one is the architecture and the third one we have urban planning so uh, as far as uh, i am concerned as a director of this school uh, i am facing uh, uh, different challenges here in the sense like uh, uh, when we we have to make because we don't uh, we don't have any campus interview for the job and all the things for our students normally our students in the final semesters they used to go to the uh, different offices and they they where they do the internship and they get selected there so that and they start working there itself but due to this pandemic condition for the last i mean the last year even this year also uh, uh, even uh, with the office they used to have the online internship and uh, very few of them they went somewhere and they uh, in their local town and they had uh, experience in internship so all these things uh, uh, became very difficult for us i mean how to manage uh, particularly and even we have feedback from the uh, various uh, prax- practicing architects consultants what they are saying are bhaiya ye jo do saal ke bacche padhai karke nikle hain na in ye to kuch samajh hi nahi pa rahe hain so all these things are there in the market even uh, uh, last year even this year uh, the final year architecture students with did the uh, thesis that was also online so uh, uh, as uh, dr sain was just telling now that uh, that personal touch is not there in the student they don't have uh, that much confidence even with the uh, employer and with uh, wherever they go for the uh, interview and all the things so uh, uh, in fact uh, i have just scribbled few points which i would like to share with the uh, all our panel members Uh, so most of the time it is advised that one should put the best foot forward to make the best impression about oneself in an interview i don't agree with this idea entirely though may help the candidate land job which is a momentary success the bigger challenges remains we able to work for a longer period of time and be able to deliver for unforeseen challenges in the organization which may not be similar to be preparing for an interview the reason is interview is not about becoming the perfect or the best candidate in front of the interviewer but rather to be honest to give an honest overview of the professional abilities and personal qualities that are relevant to an organization and the same applies to the organization also this way both parties can have a fruitful relationship while working together having said that i am not promoting not to prepare at all for interview most important is to be honest about one's credential not only in terms of raw data like educational qualifications and work experience but also about one's ability and nature of the personality that is developed over a long period of time and cannot be developed for a particular job that would act determinately to the prospect of candidate in the long run the key is 
to preparation should focus on developing skills or habits that can become genuine strength for the student and beneficial to the firms as well as not some overnight smart talk tailored for interviews which may not be very fruitful for the both the parties having said that the students should focus on following areas when they prepare for any job interview number 1 is keep it simple talk about their educational qualification achievements and other skills with their hobbies to give an overview of themselves to the panel without getting too much into detail initially if one is asked for any particular topic then the candidate can be detailed as required number 2 is specifically for students of architecture the students should go through the projects in continuation by the firm or company so that they can evaluate if they can relate to the body of work and not find themselves out of place once the anxiety of getting a job is over when the real task of working for the firm starts and also if the panel will appreciate the sincerity of the candidate of going through the company profile and its project before coming for an interview the third point is highlights the area that candidate is interested to work in or see your future so that the expectation of the firm and the career goals of the candidate are aligned and the next one is the be honest about personal traits like strength and weakness it shows how much one is aware of one's abilities and shortcomings and how the candidate can plan to overcome them in future the uh, next one is the explain your personal goals and future plan so that it becomes easier for the firms to place the candidate in the right perspective other factors that need to be looked into while preparing oneself over a longer period of time for better prospect in jobs is understand your own interest and check out how you want to plan your career path for example in architecture if one wants to join the practice one should figure out what kind of work one wants to be associated with based on the experience from education to start with one can decide if wants to work with the mall buildings hotels hospitals group housing airports blah blah all those things are there the criteria for selecting any type can be many personal interest demand in the area you want to practice any particular form of your interest working in that area the second point which we have to look after once the building type is decided the student need to finalize which kind of work related to architectural practice they want to focus in for example the conceptual design design development building approval process construction drawing preparation presentation of drawings market survey and others the ideal situation is that the student should try to gain experience in most of these areas but developing expertise in one of these areas next point what we have to consider work on the skills required to advance in your chartered career path whether technical skills soft skills or communication skills finally one needs to understand in today's world job take a substantial amount of time from our lives hence it is essential that one understands its importance with utmost clarity and honesty so that one can grow and contribute towards the growth of one's own interest and the organization they would like to work with so this is what uh, i was thinking particularly because my mind was always tuned with our own uh, architecture student interior designer student and they are creative in nature and this online system i mean uh, we are unable to uh, give i mean we are unable to uh, bring their potential up to the 100% so uh, this is my feelings about all the things okay okay thank you tinkle thank you thank you dr amuj you have really simply explain all the points of the job preparation uh, so i would like to ask professor roda uh, like professor amuj say uh, student needs a skill required for their for in a required in a today's world they should uh, you know prepare what is uh, what is expected from them from the professional journey so i would like to understand from you how institution 
can prepare students for the rapidly changing needs and challenges of a professional workplace. Sir, you are on mute. Can you please switch on your audio? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the there are two parts one is uh, the student knowing uh, what is their career path and then uh, allowing them to uh, follow that career path and uh, building their helping them build their careers uh, these are the two things uh, which we have to see now engineering education is uh, going through a very very drastic change whereby the core engineering jobs are very very limited and most of the students are uh, uh, willingly or unwillingly land up in IT related jobs. Uh, so, and the second thing is uh, they are not able to decide whether they, they are going to join a corporate world, they are going to join a uh, entrepreneurship or they are going to join a higher education. Earlier it used to be that uh, students are quite clear in their mind, but uh, students uh, normally uh, in few last few years, if you see the scenario, uh, there is a gradual shift in the thinking of the uh, students that they are more towards say, government jobs type of thing. In earlier engineering colleges, uh, the lust for government jobs was not that too much or they were not following that too much. But uh, I think uh, there was some uncertainty in the market in last 10 or 15 years there are too many lob jobs, uh, loss of jobs or something like that that has played uh, on the minds of the uh, middle class families and uh, they tend to orient themselves more towards the government jobs. And uh, what has happened in engineering education is earlier there is an uh, examination called GATE which is used to be for higher education. So there are students who are very much clear about their job prospects or they want to go for higher education. So those who were going for higher education, they were preparing for jobs. But in last few years, what has happened that some of the PSUs, uh, they are uh, picking up students from the gate qualified candidates. So now there is a mix. The students who were trying to go for higher education, they were into preparation of the gate and all those things. And the those who were trying to go in the corporate world or for the entrepreneurship and all the other things, they were preparing differently. Uh, but because of this, the situation had quite, uh, quite changed. The students even who are interested in joining the jobs, they are also are preparing for the gate. And gate does not entail any interview at that particular point of time. So a lot of time goes for the study. So first thing is uh, we need to guide the students sometime that uh, they need to identify their career paths. And then uh, we have created opportunities for the students uh, uh, wherever they want to go, they should be able to opt for those type of things. Like uh, we have a software development cell where most of the students, even if they are no not from the computer science engineering, they can join the cell and uh, they can learn uh, software uh, skills uh, like Python and uh, there are so many languages around the corner. So they can learn these languages. Uh, we have uh, established a uh, uh, communication and soft skill uh, cell also. So this is general cell where uh, all the students are invited to join our different uh, short term and long term training programs. There are program one day workshops, there are week long programs, even we have held some 30 days programs for the students uh, for this uh, communication skills and uh, soft skill. So obviously, uh, along with our uh, normal curriculum, we have to create a lot of opportunities for the students uh, to get uh, life skills so that uh, they can perform better uh, in their life, whether they are moving for a higher studies or whether they are going for a job. So yes, uh, these are the some steps we take, uh, but guiding a students to their career paths is a most difficult uh, thing uh, that uh, means a student should be able to decide by the second year if i am talking in terms of the engineering students so which is a four year course so by second year if a student is a student is able to find out what is his orientation like then it will be better for them uh, to prepare well uh, for whatever uh, goal they are setting so goal setting is uh, one of the 
things which uh, we are trying to teach them in normal classes during our interaction in the seminars also uh, but that is an effort uh, <laughs> and it makes certain uh, impact on the students also uh, yes uh, these are the few steps which we can take and uh, we can provide them the opportunities but ultimately it is the students wish and will and uh, inner strength how they pulls it up uh, the things have gone uh, quite other way in the pandemic uh, we have called the students on campus uh, but they are not joining even for the campus interviews uh, this is another challenge uh, we are facing because i think back of the mind they have if we have been called on the campus we will be appearing in the uh, offline examination and if a student had now fearing started fearing a offline examination that is a fact and i am facing that yeah, yeah. challenge very badly uh, yes, i i don't think uh, how the other institutions will be facing uh, these types of challenges where the students are uh, now afraid of uh, appearing in uh, offline yes, examinations sir. and all, all those things uh, so these are the <laughs> the situation is very very volatile and uh, last two years have been very very challenging for us to bring students to the different types of uh, education needs and uh, their career needs uh, and this, yes yes uh, you have chosen a good topic to talk upon so we are talking on that uh, i am listening to uh, my co panelist and uh, yes i am taking few points out of them uh, madam sain has said that uh, we should uh, Uh, take them early uh, into the system but yes uh, uh, it will be depending upon at what stage students are joining us i uh, say in a, in a, a management institution uh, student student is generally graduate students are joining post uh, mbas and all those things so they are quite well settled uh, in their mind what they, they want to do but when a student come after 10th or 12th at my college uh, they are not uh, that well settled yeah. and they don't want the career path so we have to work differently at different stages with the students and uh, yes uh, i face different types of student student come from after 10th uh, to me uh, students come from 12th after come from graduations so we have to take different strategy for different students to cater to them. thank you thank you if you allow me one uh, one quick one minute to reply to uh, professor arora So, Professor Arora, you're right that you know when students, even I have dealt with students at the undergraduate level also, apart from the ones who come for PGDM or MBA. So, what I kind of believe is that if we work around an inverted pyramid kind of a pattern, where we we start with talking the broader perspective. So, what we've done at our uh, university is in the very first year, you know, around the first semester or even before the first semester. we took them through uh, you know important uh, you know i wouldn't call it subject like important sections or areas where we wanted to let under, make them understand that knowing the world around you is also very important start with that read newspapers you are so much on the internet download some you know new, leading newspaper apps read them understand it how does it matter how does something happening in afghanistan is going to impact the life or the you know how is some you know oil barrel price is going to impact our day to day life so that awareness you know so many you know top leaders summits and meets happen what are they discussing what are these things that you know occurs was coming at one point of time so you know that awareness that the it is not just my mobile my classroom my college my family you have to broaden your perspective so if we start like an inverted pyramid structure where we talk to them about the world in general about the you know outside uh, you know, society and the community in general then we truncate them gradually to the subjects then themselves and gradually we prepare them so that is what my view point was that and that is how we kind of you know prepare the students to have a world view of things read the newspaper read discuss it in class doesn't matter right or wrong discuss it in class so that you know automatically your presentation skills your analysis your communication skills they get sharper and sharper and we do it multiple times so that you don't face a challenge or nervousness towards the last minute so i thought i'll just share my yeah uh, 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 i am happy that uh, you have intervened and give uh, some some ideas about it uh, I, one one thing one, one question i would like, like to ask whether this is a part of your curricula or uh, this is co curricular activities uh, like that 
so we want we what we do is it is both to answer your question what we did was even before we actually started the uh, the program the semester there was something like a foundation course so for one full month we did different kinds of courses and you know where we gave them world view what is economic because at the undergraduate level even if you are studying journalism even if you are studying design you must understand economics how does money work you know what goes around in the you know in the economy of any country we have to understand how does management work what is you know a design student could or an engineering student when he works on a project management in an organization he will be dealing with people from different backgrounds so he should be able to know something about about the subject something about the people something about how to work with people something about his own emotional intelligence something about others emotional uh, intelligence so we gave that kind of an orientation in the before even before the semester so this was kind of non credit but after they joined also the first semester is designed in a manner where they study a lot of subjects so across streams it could be one could be a psychology student one could be a bba student one could be a design student or a law student they study things like you know introduction to management digital humanities critical thinking communication skills these are certain uh, you know uh, skills about which are across your departments and you know disciplines so the first uh, semester takes care of this to give an orientation and then gradually as you go along uh, studying specific uh, subjects in according to your discipline it is interspersed in that so let's say if a management student is studying introduction to management principles of management all of these how do you work on a on a problem what are what are organized like like there are different uh, you know websites where you have company reports available so you read them you find out about you know how is the business doing how do we understand what are the things that we look at to see that whether the business is doing good or not what are these ads talking about what are their hiring practices so that you start looking at the companies side by side from year one itself you know and doesn't matter how much you understand but at least that sensitization starts early so that is what uh, is the and those when you are studying in the semester then that is all that is a part of your credit the pedagogy the methodology teaching methodology has to be extremely practical irrespective of the discipline thank you thank, thank you dr sain so until now we have discussed when the students should start their preparation having the certain life skills uh, we have discussed what sort are of simple steps the student can start preparing and we also discussed the uh, importance of goal setting and you know identifying our career path so i would like to request mr praveen uh, for his point of view since you are in industry for so long can you share some your your thoughts and light on this thank you no i uh, agree with most of the points which have been discussed uh, in the panel and specifically what professor roda and professor sain talked about uh, i we firmly believe that the process of skill building should start from the moment the student enters the university so whether it's undergrad or postgrad from the first semester itself the process should start because you have to invest in skilling up now we have to understand also how the uh, when uh, if the student is aiming to do well in the interview they have to under they have to prepare for it and they have to understand what is the outlook in the market what is the industry shaping up to be so along with the measures which professor sain talked about where they should be aware of what's happening in the industry they should also be aware of what are the kind of new roles coming up so when a recruiter when say a organized like a google or an amazon comes to the campus or uh, when a manufacturing uh, company comes to the campus they have to be obviously be self aware and they have to be aware of what the industry is uh, looking for along with that they need to have these essential life skills because eventually whether they will make it through the interview or not will depend on how well are they able to exhibit these skills these skills are the life skills so i'll take an example communication skill is not english speaking communication skill is about analyzing information taking out the core crux and really coming up with a point of view now the benchmark of communication skill is that you are in a group discussion of four people and three people have a view counter to yours yet you are able to communicate your point of view with key takeaways and not get into a conflict situation 
so for example in group discussions or in interviews this is what the uh, organizations would look for is the individual a good communicator is he a problem solver they uh, uh, and and individual tactics are used for example they would typically want to understand the depth of the knowledge of the student and would give a counter view to what the student is talking about and then see how they react so the student has to be smart and he has to obviously combine his technical knowledge his industry knowledge along with these skills to really fare well in the interview there is enough research and data which shows that during an interview process within the first 1 minute the recruiter decides whether to hire the individual or not and this is true for interviews at all levels and especially from the college uh, undergrad postgrad levels so what that means is how uh, how uh, you introduce yourself also makes a difference what are the references what are the personal stories you are able to build up and how uh, how practically you are able to exhibit your knowledge and your depth of uh, understanding of what you are preparing for so and this was also touched by uh, uh, professor <clears throat> sorry professor kumar from chicago where he said that it's good to understand uh, for what to be sitting for so yeah, it is very important for the student to prepare but the limited point i'd like to make is there are frameworks there are methodologies which the students have to invest their time on along with their curriculum the universities and campuses can open up avenues can open up options but the students have to invest energy and because it it's really make and break we would only get 5 minutes or 10 minutes within which the recruiter will decide whether he wants to hire you or uh, you or not so that's the limited point i would make and uh, and would really encourage everybody to start investing and reading more on building up these skills okay. thank you mr kori thank you now i would like to ask professor kushpa lata like mr pravin also mentioned a student should know should read more and know about the industry where they are entering into so i would i would we would like to understand from you like we often see a gap you know student applying their knowledge and skills in the unfamiliar situation we have seen sometimes a recruiter asking then a uh, certain scenario they couldn't able to apply their concepts so how can students be trained and what's the role of the university in this important part of student career building yeah thank you pinkel for that and uh, i would uh, given this limited time i would focus on the practices currently operational in kit university suppose a undergraduate students join say uh, branch of civil engineering or uh, computer engineering or something or a post graduate student joins in a particular say science courses or a phd student even joins what is the common framework uh, starting with the undergraduate students because the number is very more it is it is the most relevant a student joins we have courses in the curriculum okay so that i will talk later but uh, the support system uh, which is prevalent uh, in the university is that there is uh, properly built student societies covering each and every arena of students attitude building skills and also some soft skills whether it is writing for a magazine whether it is coming to uh, perform uh, performing arts or it is uh, working with a non governmental organization or working for a cause many of these factors are being taken care by the student societies and those are being run by the students themselves so that gives them an edge for managing or inculcating the right kind of attitudes of soft skill building beyond that learning different languages so the university has a dedicated center for school of languages where the students get an opportunity to learn many foreign languages including sanskrit also students to want to work in the field as a practitioner maybe working for some humanitarian causes there are also dedicated societies or units uh, the popular one which is present in many universities the uh, nss so similarly like nss there are many societies also students can go to the field and work 
so that give, makes them compassionate and feel for uh, the society this is part of the students and when they go to uh, the complete their second year and during their first year and second year they are given some glimpses of what is the job market by the uh, concerned departments or also by the training and placement department also through several expert lectures which is conducted by the university and by the department themselves when they go to the third year the moment they complete their fifth semester uh, sorry sixth semester the specific training uh, i would like to po- uh, uh, put one point here from the first year and second year the students are being constantly told about whether you want to go for a job or to go for a higher education if it is higher education whether you want to go for a general master of business administration or you want to uh, go for a masters in your field then accordingly suppose get net preparation there is a institutional process if there is a master of business assessment gre all those kind of training processes if this is a get net preparation the departments take over so the students pretty well decide what to be done and those who are getting ready for the jobs typically the corporate jobs the specific rigorous training starts for that and there is also a dedicated division called uh, for that who those who prepare basic skills specific skills how to handle interview how to go for uh, making a point in group discussion all those kind of things happen this is for the students now enriching the curriculum the faculty they go through academic audits administrative audits to know whether our student outcome is backed up by sufficient processes then there is a academic council there is board of studies which has representative from universities and regulatory agencies also so i think that a building up of a system building up processes enriching the curriculum revisiting talking to alumni talking to employers so building a good stakeholder network is how the university is preparing the students for their job readiness thank you so much for sharing my views thank you professor pushpa rada now i would like to ask dr rahul uh, so sir uh, we have discussed how students can prepare what are the best practices the institutions have adopted uh, can you tell us how we can foster the intellectual exchange between academia and industry it's uh, thank you for that question it's almost uh, as if you read my mind because i was thinking about the same issue right now and i wanted to highlight it also one of the uh, main uh, challenges uh, especially pertaining to business management education in india is the lack of industry academia uh, collaborations and uh, we don't take it seriously neither the academia takes it seriously nor the corporate takes it seriously now we have a board of studies where we have many industry people coming in we have academic uh, advisory council where also there are a lot of industry people coming in plus there are guest lectures etc etc that all institutions do uh, but unfortunately there is no continuous dialogue or conversation uh, which shows what the industry actually expects and uh, how do they feel the academic institution should in this case the mba institution should guide their students in order to become job ready this job readiness is a word being used everywhere but uh, unfortunately we don't have a clear idea of what that means because on uh, from the other side uh, we normally do not get very big encouragement when we try to find out that what is it that we actually need and what is it that we should include or exclude from our curriculum and how should we go about it in order to satisfy your you with our students you know so that you don't say you say that yeah students are job ready this is good another side of this thing the same thing is that uh, i'm not putting the blame on anybody else it's not a blame game but the corporates are not interested in investing in people in the initial stages 
the investment starts only in the middle and the higher levels so the students are left to almost swim as they want there are a few corporates who yeah. do very well but most corporates do not want to take that responsibility of grooming them for their specific roles you know so uh, students do get a little confused when they get into the job especially the freshers you see here in our country mbas are mostly freshers uh, like uh, Ravin was talking about it is uh, experienced people. Uh, you need actually a two three years experience to get into a good U.S. university MBA. But you don't require that in India, and the freshers get a little bit confused. So I think you are uh, what you said is absolutely correct. I will agree with you completely, and that is the industry and academia uh, uh, partnership should be. Much, much more, more, much more meaningful conversation should be there, but both the parties don't seem to have enough time to do that or they enough inclination to do that. Here, there is a business opportunity also. Some agencies can become the bridge between the academia and the industry, and that, if they are able to do that, it will be a great service uh, not only to the MBA mm-hmm. education but also to the education. Uh, system at large. Uh, this is in general. One point I wanted to <coughs> say, which is specific to MBA, is that uh, the the MBA education is becoming so expensive, and now everybody wants to do MBA. It is not uh, restricted to a particular section of affluent society. It is everybody wants one. I mean, a lot of people wants to get into the MBA. Now, what we see is that a lot of our students, especially tier two, tier three kind of institutions, a lot of our students has to take finance to take up the take up the course, and so their aim uh, right from the beginning, uh, when they are going to hit the job market, their aim is to somehow get a high salary package. That is what is important. The brand is not important. The company right. is not important. The long-term prospects are not important. What is important is how much they are paying here and now, because I have to survive after paying my EMIs. I have to survive in a city like Bombay, Delhi. I need money. They are also they are also right. So this is a conundrum which we have not been able to uh, solve at all. And uh, uh, sometimes you really feel. Uh, A little bit sorry for the students that you can't can't help it. We we do understand and appreciate that yes they have a reason to say that it's not that they are wrong, but this trend is wrong. It's the trend that uh, you know it's only business management means only money uh, somehow is probably diluting the entire uh, scope of the education system. Uh, uh, definitely management education system. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. So panelists, we are running out of time. So I will just quickly ask all the panelists their closing uh-huh. remarks and if you have any advice to our students how they can prepare for the job yeah. and all what are the important skills they should have uh, when they are entering, starting the professional journey. So I would I would like to start with Professor Arora. Okay. Professor Arora. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, there are a uh, lot many tips we uh, go on giving to our students uh, day on day out basis. Uh, yes, uh, they need to have a, uh, as uh, Professor Sain identified that uh, they should know their environment well. What is going on? What is going on? What is happening around the world? What are, what are the incidents and even take place and why they take place? And know their environment well and decide their uh, career goals. Know yourself well. You 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 need to know yourself well and your environment well, so that you can be in harmony with your environment when you decide your goal. That is, I think, I am telling my students that whatever career path you decide, you should be in harmony with that. Uh, it should not be uh, beyond your basic nature. Firstly, you should identify your nature and uh, you choose a career path which is uh, in sync with your uh, nature. 
and then uh, yes uh, there are a lot many path, paths in on on every career paths it is not only one uh, you can go many sides uh, but you have to uh, follow your journey and uh, be happy and be in sync with yours where you can remain happy that is my one of the <laughs> advice to the students thank you professor uh, now i would like to request dr sen so any closing remarks or any advice for our students how they can be job ready interview ready thank you so dimple um, i have also been reading the questions that are coming up on the chat box and students are asking questions like you know what do i do how do the cg what cgpa should i have i have good marks but i don't have uh, communication skills you know and a, and a variety of questions that are coming up i'm sure somebody will answer them my couple of points that i would like to bring along with what i have said earlier is that students have to uh, develop a context of what you know where they are going to be working with the a context they have to come out of those silos of getting a degree they are if they are preparing for irrespective whether they are preparing for a job or they are preparing for their own businesses they must have a contextual understanding that which context are they operating in what does the what does what does the business look like what does the market look like what are the people like so a broader understanding i think which uh, aroda also mentioned second point will be so there has to be a journey don't look at just the destination it is a journey it is not a job that you are preparing yourself for you are preparing for a career i think professor ambuj kumar also mentioned somewhere that don't have like one job it is important to be prepared not just for that one job because today you prepare for one job two years three years from now maybe that job will not be there we've seen covid has brought in so many changes ai ml all of these will bring in more changes and probably those jobs will not be there at all by the time you graduate so don't prepare for a job prepare yourself for a career so so that is one thing second is Uh, you know there are umpteen kind of uh, remarks and feedback that come from um, uh, the recruiters and the and the market and which i think dr rahul choudhury also mentioned very correctly i agree with what he said that there is there is a lack of uh, what do you like i the the willingness i think is is there like we say political willingness so uh, the institutions are probably also not doing enough uh to get that industry academia interface the academy the industry is also not aware of how all they can help so there are efforts which are being made but again you know half hearted efforts and not seeing it through not completing the last mile you know completion is not happening so of course we have uh, we've got uh, you know robust systems here wherein we present whatever modules whatever courses we are going to uh, offer to our students those are first presented to the industry and told that this is what we are going to be studying or teaching and uh, if there are any even we share the module plans also so if you have any comments let us know uh, we take their advice and we make changes we are also teaching our second year mba pgdm electives through industry people people of professionals of practice they are coming and teaching and of course there is a shadow faculty but that is the kind of thing that we are doing so we are doing from all from our own perspectives but students also need to take it very seriously while the industry also the summer internships have to be treated very very seriously by the industry also and not just give them some random job to do so that has to be that that really has to help students then coming so that is the uh, academia's role industry's role and the students role somewhere i think somewhere it was mentioned that the students have found it very easy this online mode they have to come you know they have to overcome this this that 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 ease that they are that you know they are getting into a comfort zone which is not good for them something which comes easy goes also easy so this is your education you can't take it you know just like that read very well study uh, in depth these days if you see i think hmm. most of the colleges are facing this students don't switch on their camera they don't switch on their mics and you know it's becoming like a monologue for the faculty members no matter how much you try to make them active yeah some section a small section will speak but the majority will not speak and they're happy being that way they're not realizing that for a short you know period of happiness and comfort they're ruining their entire futures there is a lot of a uh, lot of material a lot of content that goes on in student interaction 
you develop a lot of uh, skills you pick up a lot of skills but if you don't read and if you think that okay this is an easy kind of thing we'll do online exams we'll copy from here or there and then you know that somehow we will scrape along it is not a long term strategy so if you are if you are looking at that uh, it is not going to help you so all three of us the industry the academia and the students are in it together and they have to work accordingly so that will be my advice and students constantly read, need to read newspapers watch news the right kind of news the right kind of news presenters and learn from them constantly and debate among themselves talk among themselves talk to students talk to seniors talk to peers you know develop that habit of analysis and presentation thank you thank you dr sam thank you now dr rahul would you like to give your closing remarks or any advice to our students yes uh, uh, i just uh, want to advise the students that uh, they should uh, in the in the mba uh, i'm talking strictly about the mba only uh, in the mba they should choose a subject that is that is a function and try to become an expert on that initially entire effort should be based on or should be targeted at becoming or gaining expertise in a single area whether it is theoretical or practical doesn't matter it can be theoretical initially supplemented by practical experiences later on in life if they want to be in general management that also is definitely an option but that should start after you have crossed the initial stages of your career it is it is to start in the mid level or the top level mid level is the ideal to start becoming an all rounder in business management but as a student you should have complete uh, idea or as much as is possible you should become try and become an expert in your domain if you are a marketing you should be very confident about marketing if you are in hr you should be very confident in hr and your knowledge base should be very very high not only the books and the teachings that takes place in the institute but definitely like uh, professor sen was also saying read as much as possible uh, with the advent of the internet and all this the reading habits are uh, just going for a toss among our students we have all seen that happening the younger generation hardly buys books hardly reads books most of many of them some of them definitely do and so uh, but the expertise in a domain is absolutely necessary to make a good career and the foundation should start from your mba institution on thank you thank you thank you so much dr rahul and now professor pushpa lata can you please share your advice or your views thank you uh, i think most of the things i have told uh, whatever i will tell will be a repeat uh, but to present it in a slightly different language that uh, knowing one's mind early essential then building of expertise around that interest is the yeah. second point third point is keeping our eyes and ears open for the opportunities in this and available and uh, the peripheral opportunities that i might uh, be interested in or might be uh, interested to make a mid career jump or something like that Uh, so keeping ourselves uh, updated and involved is the key or that way we should prepare ourselves to be very specific thank you thank you professor thank you so much uh, now professor ambul no uh, i like to yeah okay uh, so my uh, i would like to conclude with a few words only because most of the our panel members they have already told about so many things uh the thing is that uh, uh, our student uh, particularly architecture or interior design or any design students they should be strong enough in their creativity and innovative ideas because our field our domain is full of that creativity and innovation so they they should be strong enough in that field and uh, if they are strong enough in that field uh, what i feel personally that Uh, though they can struggle only for one or two years but in the long run 
oh, they will do very good things. So this is the only thing I just would like to suggest all the students of uh, creativity field. Thank you. Thank you, Tinkal. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Mr. Praveen, I would like to ask you, like how Harappa go hand in hand with universities, colleges to make students job ready. Can you share a few of your experience yeah. with us? So, uh, yeah, thank you. So, uh, as I was, uh, as I uh, talked about it earlier, there are frameworks and there are uh, programs by which students can actually uh, build their skills. You obviously have to invest time and uh, these skills are called life skills. They are a set of cognitive, social and emotional skills. And these are required for every professional to be successful. Uh, these are all scientifically researched by behavioral scientists across the world and these are stream agnostic. So whether you are a design student, whether you are an engineering student, whether you are a management student, these are a set of skills which will help you be more successful in your professional journey. Uh, and they are not specifically for students who are entering to the job uh, workplace. Obviously, it's for them, but it's also for professionals to be successful. So Harappa works with institutes and corporates across the country. Uh, running these programs. Uh, we have institution partners where the programs uh, which we build are part of the curriculum uh, for students as they enter their first year, first trimester. There are also some short term programs uh, where students can actually get an exposure uh, in their final year as they're getting ready. And we also work with some of the leading uh, corporates like Microsoft, CGI, we work with Disney, Hotstar. And you know, so and, and you'd be surprised if, for example, uh, Microsoft is training all their Asia Pacific leaders on communication. Uh, and uh, and uh, so this uh, this gap, this skill gap, this need gap has been identified by academia, by corporate and everybody is investing time uh, and energy into it. So uh, Harappa works with institutes, Harappa works with corporates. We have frameworks, we have programs. Uh, which help our students being more successful and uh, professionals to be much more successful in their careers. And I would strongly encourage the students as well to have the reading material and also go through and understand uh, how they can build up these skills as part of the job. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Praveen. So thank you all. Uh, it was really an enlightening, insightful session. We will now close the session. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Temple. Thank, 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 thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.